but yeah, just like. At least you keep him busy. Yeah. Better than being bored. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just having these three days off is already like, all right, I'm ready to go back to work. Yeah. Like, <laughs> So what is it that you, you work strictly through, like underrated for the most part, or what do you do for work outside of the, the uh, Working at Icon. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, so that's that, the main. That's like full-time. Try to stay close to the mic. Yeah. At least like a. It's like a full-time, yeah, full-time is the only a, way to put it. They're a collective out here? That's a music school. I mean, they use that term because it's like, it's, they, it's a good term for like making a point that the people who graduate are still part of it you know what i right. mean because like they have they literally have a studio that's only for grads like students who are there now can't check out time in that studio at oh, all okay it's, it's accessible only, to it's only, only for the, the grads you know because they want to you know like my office is like right near that studio mm-hmm. and so that i always hear the admissions guys they're like yeah if you come here it's not just okay you're here you're done it's like we want you to like give you a platform for afterwards oh, nice. you know so yeah i mean the, like, the only thing that really needs to be said about the school is that the results speak for themselves. You know, Jaws went there, Kazo went there, Io went there. Oh, oh, oh okay. Tron. Not, not a lot of, like, the, the most, like, well, Rinzen went there, um, Michael, shout out mm-hmm. Michael. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of, like, the techno guys. It's, like, a lot of the, like, EDM guys, but, you know, it's, like, dude, sure. like. Is know. it a school that kind of, like, you think breeds that kind of music initially, or they look for that kind of sound with artists that. Just oh, no, and I just rem- I just remember I duh, Anakin went there, you know, mm-hmm. and he's all about the techno, so I was pretty much it varies. wrong. Yeah, no, <laughs> pretty much wrong. You. I mean, the, the the huge the huge guys, the jaw, you know, it's like Nightmare went there, Slander, and I mean, I sounds like pretty yeah, like an accredited space. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's it's that's why I say the results speak for themselves yeah. about it. So like, you know, it's cool for me to be a part, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like the people they attract, you know, I mean, like, I don't know if that was their goal when they set out because sure. the guy who founded it, his name is Christopher. He's like a singer songwriter, and they started the. Um, they're about to start the like the vocal artist program mm-hmm. like a year from now, and so he was telling me he's like that's when like not that I'm not excited about what we're doing now, but like now I get to use more of that. But I think it's just like more just a response to what kind of people are willing to go to a music school like that. It's, right. You know, it's not people. You know, it's I like mean, the Juilliard of Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, kind of. <laughs> that's a very <laughs> that's a, right. it's a very flattering way yeah, to put it, it for sure. Right. Um, I mean, whatever. Well, let's flatter them. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, flatter let's give it to them. Why they, not? They deserve it. Yeah. Let's um, see. You do you do writing for them? Yeah, I do. They have a blog, but my main title is like marketing and events oh, coordinator. Okay. Okay, so got it. I do a lot of the social media stuff. Like, there's a lot of like student announcements. Like, you know. Um, How many they, people are in attendance there? Honestly, Roughly. maybe like a couple hundred. I that okay. is that's actually a question I have yet to ask. But yeah. I mean, like enough what, for there to be morning announcements. Yeah, I mean, not, not like every morning, but like right. there's like digital signage, like there's like all the different channels, you know, like sure. I help like like do stuff with like the website, like make sure like the copy is clear, you know. Right. I mean, like from what I can gather, like by the, I didn't study marketing in school, so mm. my experience with it is that like you basically like are the middle person between like, you know, the public and whatever it is right. you're marketing, yeah, of you know. Like and a like, publicist. Yeah, thing, so, kind right. of, yeah, without the emphasis on the legitimate like, right. act of getting yeah. press. But yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, that's true. Yeah, it's just like, you know, like, how do we get people interested in our school, the right people interested in our school? You know, how do we make sure the students like have the right impression of our school? You know, it's it's, I mean, brand management. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Like they give me a lot. They've like they're really open to hearing my ideas, which is really awesome, you know, and super helpful if you have. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, but like the funny thing about it is um, like I was I have I've been there for like a month now and um, the. Uh, my boss, quote unquote, who hired me, she just had a baby, so she was literally there for like nine days nice. and then left on maternity leave. So like, congratulations! Lady. Lady. <laughs> oh yeah, Sarah, shout Robert, out Sarah, Sarah. The baby Ami. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so they're basically just like, you know, I basically expected to do like her job. So mm-hmm. you know, it's like it's it's stressful, you know. But it's I mean, it keeps, I, gives you something to do. Yeah, I mean, well, it's yeah. I mean, there's a lo- there's a lot to do now, but like you know, it's 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 a lot of adapting, you know. But I feel like I'm doing <laughs> yeah. Do decent you, enough job. Do you do any of your music through there directly? Because I know you DJ as well, or is it strictly like you just manage it for? I mean, for I, the school. I don't I don't make music, so oh, okay. Yeah, like I don't produce, so got it. So where, how did you get? So was Icon your introduction to like that sort of industry as far as manage like talent? Uh, marketing market, marketing the beginning of it was uh underrated and shout out surreal right. um because like surreal and i actually met in an when i was driving an uber i picked him up really yeah what are the chances <laughs> that holy shit uh, yeah i mean 
Yeah, it's funny because when I started doing Uber, it was in college, and so that was basically like, right. you know, I don't have to worry about like calling off if I need to study more, and sure. the pay was decent. So it's just like whatever, but always in the back of my mind, I was like, there's like a slight, very minimal, poss- minimal, minimal. Possibi- ah, <laughs> possibility ah. that I'll meet okay. someone who will like be more than Intr- just like right, a, right. like a fun conversation, sure. and that's like exactly what happened. Sure, you know, and so like when Cyril and I initially like connected in this, like, it was like from his old pad on Coango, like all the way to Century City mm-hmm. in like the middle of a weekday, so like took two hours, and Damn. so like the whole time, like we were talking about the scene, but like you know. Like, at that time, I'd done no, like, marketing or nothing. It was all about the writing. Right. And, like, basically around that same time, he was, like, already – because I do their whole blog, like, all those interviews and for stuff. For underrated. Like, yeah, like, right. I interviewed you for that. Yeah. And all these other people in the scene and bigger artists. But he was already, like, trying to, like, put that into motion, you know, and so he just needed mm-hmm. someone to, you know, to kind of, like, lead it. And that's, like – we didn't start working together, like, immediately after I met him. We just kind of kept in touch for a few months. Sure. But then, yeah, like, when the opportunity was open, he's like, yeah, now we can bring you on board and this and that. But, like, in addition to me doing that, he all, like, like I just started doing the marketing and stuff as well, like, the social stuff. Like, right. that's, that's where they needed a little bit of help as well, you know, so I just filled those shoes and, like, sure. you know, naturally started. Played um, your role where you needed. Yeah, I mean, because, like, Cyril is really great at marketing, too. He's, you know, that's why, you know, these events are one of the reasons why these events are doing so well. Right. We also work with another girl. Her name is Sabrina. Shout mm-hmm. out Sabrina, um, who's, like. She does all of our designs, and she also helps a lot with, like, the marketing and stuff, like, the partnerships with other, you know, other, I don't know, right. kid, Any, other promoters and things right. like that. And so I learned a lot from her. And, you know, because, like, the thing about the, like, the writing, you know, it's something I enjoy, like, very much. Like, I'm, Were I'm, you doing it before Underrated? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it started, like, midway. Yeah, take me back. <laughs> take me back. It started, like, midway through college, like, because, like, I was in college, and I, the only thing I knew that I wanted to do was music, nothing, like, specific sure. about that. And so when I started college, I was, like, a jazz trombone major. Like, no kidding. You know, like, a performance major. Oh, yeah. And, like, that was definitely cool, like, because, you Do you know, still like, play? A little bit. Sick. It's Bring sick. it out next time. <laughs> Bring it out to the next party. <laughs> not not the next party, but, like, some Something. party. Yeah. There'll be a party where it'll be appropriate. A trombone is necessary. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I was in school, and then, like, basically just – pursuing that like full time like you know you would hear all the teachers be like if you just, you don't love this you have to like do something else and right. like i mean i, can I always yeah and, like i always even knew when i started i'm like i'm not going to be a trombone player as a job like it's not going to be a thing. where would that even place you where could you just be in a in um a well the people who are in the program choir? with me who are like successful one of them's like their revolutions go to no saxophone player yeah Tight. you know i mean like it's not a lot of there's like, avenues yeah some people yeah. have gone like bigger tours but it's a lot about just like gigging and like making right. things happen for right, yourself right, right, but right. like once you have a good reputation of both like your personality and your like playing ability like it just that sounds fair. you know it just falls in place right. like there's no reason to call another person that kind of thing but anyway so yeah i was surrounded by all those people who were like steadily advancing on their craft and like becoming like a really close like tight-knit group sure. and like i always felt like on the outside of that and it's just like dude like you know i i knew from the beginning that this music yeah, like this isn't even my favorite music right. by a mile and so i really just like thought like a like what do i like to do what kind of music like what kind of music do i really like which is all kinds okay. um what do i like naturally kind of okay at which was always writing like going back to like you know, so it went from music and then you just completely veered to just text as opposed or like kind, writing journalism kind of, as yeah because like one of the things i say like tell people is like if if you're really like confused like think about really like the base level of things you like to do not like anything like super exterior like oh like i like to i like to you know design sports okay. cars and like, nothing okay. specific think right. about things like on a more instinctual level and for me that was literally like just having like a really like a complicated you, that's opinion right. you know yeah. like that was just like my thing a i just complicated really opinion. i swear to god because like you know like why do you like this band for this this and this and like that's just you know how that's my, how, you that's how my down, brain so. works and i was oh, like okay. how do i integrate that into music it's like oh you just perfect be a, be a writer and yeah. then while all that was going down i needed a new um source <laughs> for free shows because leading up to that i had worked at the hollywood bowl for four summers in a row okay. it was my first like real job super blessed that that was my first job um and i saw like any, any and Anything everything. I saw, like, right. System of a Down. I saw Fish. I saw, like, the orchestra play, like, right. every piece I would want them to play, right. like, from all across the spectrum. And so, like, that, and like, I needed to stop doing that. I was like, well, shit. Well, <laughs> I need somewhere nice. else to get a free ticket. <laughs> it's like, it needs to be a thing. <laughs> like, and so, like, I was with my friends when I was, like, really, like, thinking about gravitating to journalism. And they had, like, kind of started their own blog with nothing more than, like, a Tumblr. Okay. And they're just like, yeah, we got 
we got free tickets to like it was like RAC. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he played no. in like the Constellation Room. He's like this like funky that. electronic sure, guy. He's sure, all right. sure, sure. But like they got free tickets to his show and like they did an interview with him and all this stuff. And I was like, what did you guys have to do? You know, like we, we literally just emailed his manager and asked. And I was like, are you serious? Like, because I could definitely do it. Were they writing for No, they had their the name own the Tumblr was? and they just came up with some random name. Right. And it was just the two of them. And they had just like maybe done a little bit of other like content before. Right. But like, yeah, it was like it was that easy. And I was like, OK. I like the reason behind your writing. You yeah. just want to be able to get in for free sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, I mean, that's how like like that combined with like all the other I mean, you of know, course, more of universal yeah, shit. Of but like, no, like. I the t- essence that's what it. I tell people it was you know it yeah. was I needed more free tickets it needed to be a thing how long but, have you been going to like shows as far as like being, were you originally here in LA yeah I was born native here born here oh, okay so you're yeah. a local fully local started going out and then you're I like, mean like I really started like going to shows like like for fun when I was like 14 or 15 okay. you know yeah, like getting right. a ride from like my parents or my brothers Damn. my, friend, just drop you off my friend's ABC's sister or? not at ABC no. just like little like little like like Fonda shows, sure. like they have, you know, I, oh, I didn't, okay. I didn't listen to electronic music at Got all. It. Like back then it was all Got like bands and stuff, which are, I guess have a little bit of a better rep than like raves, but for whatever uh, I mean, it depends. <laughs> it's about the same. For whatever. If yeah. You're talking I mean, about like back then when we were young, going to music and stuff. Okay. And then, so you went from that, you got into the, you got into writing and then how did you get linked up with underrated? Was it through Sorrel directly when you guys were in the Uber? Yeah, that was the, uh-huh. I, I, I'd been to minimal effort in like 2015, like a couple years okay. before I met him. You that know, was so your I, first crack at writing? My, my first, like, no, my first crack at writing is, like I said, like, after I met those guys, okay. I started my own, like, little Tumblr thing, and I would literally just go through all, like, the venues and, like, find, like, random opening artists and just hit them up and be like, yo, do you want... Interesting. A little piece written about you? Yeah, and I would I bought a camera, so I was like, you take pictures and write mm, the piece, mm-hmm. and, you know, and most of them, like, these are bands that probably haven't gotten any press since, right. uh, since I hit them up, if they're okay. even still a band, you know? And they were all stoked on it, and, like, usually it'd be, like, the like the bigger artist that somebody I would want to watch, and I would right, also right, take right, pictures right. of that. Sure. And then I would send them to the art, you know, it was just like... Yeah, you worked it in with the... Yeah, in, and then, but, like... Once I had done it, like, been doing it for, like, a few months, and I started following more blogs, like, random electronic music blogs, is, like, I was also, like, getting deeper in electronic as I was, like, going to these shows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I saw, it was one, it was called EDM Chicago, and they were just, like, we need writers. And I was, like, okay. You know, and I just filled out the thing, and, you know, like, right. it was, it, yeah, you just, like. EDM Chicago, but you were out here in L.A. Yeah, I, they, it was funny, because they thought I lived in Chicago when I started. And then and like, they gave you the job anyway? You didn't yeah, clarify I, at any point? They were like, hey, they, I'm actually they never at, They never asked, they just assumed uh, I was in Chicago. I was like, I don't. What? I don't, I don't, <laughs> what? I don't know. It didn't really. It was. It was. You know, it was even better when I found out that they didn't know because, like, that just means I could go to everything out here. There was no. Competition. Yeah, but weren't the shows in Chicago? No, I would just. T- I would tell them I would want. Oh, like, you would write for EDM Chicago for shows out here in LA. Yeah, I mean, uh. most of what I would write wouldn't be for shows at that point because, like, once like EDM Chicago had like eighty thousand likes on Facebook, which sure. is, that's not nothing. Like, there were ads on the site. Like, somebody was right, make, right. somebody was making money off mm-hmm. this shit, and so like they wanted some non like show exchange for tickets right and they want some like basic dues right. and all this Whatever stuff works yeah and it's like you know like why not like because at that point you know one of my questions was you know can i get free tickets to festivals if i start writing for you guys so like yeah so i'm like okay well wow. i'll put i'll put in the work you know and then you know after edm chicago for a few months then it was edm maniac and i think that was right. like that was like the more important like Obviously, I'd been writing before, but I feel like that was, like, a really important step just because I'm still writing for EDM Maniac. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I just had lunch with Devin today. He's the editor. Shout out, Devin. Um, but, like, you know, A, he was out in L.A., so, like, you know, that was just, you know, it's just made for better, you know, better communication, yeah. better understanding. Um, B, but he started paying me, like, after, like, a couple months. And now, like, granted, not, like, enough to support right, myself right, sure. in anything. But it was, and it was. It's better than it, Yeah, no, it was, like, it was just, like, he clearly valued what I was doing. And, you know, he, like, he understood. It's like, yeah, like, you're giving me time. And, yes, like, you're getting a festival here and there, but I'm asking way more, more right, of right, you. Right, like, than what it is. You know, yeah. like, I don't know. The most festivals I've gone to any year for free was, like, three. You know, like, I'm not asking every I mean, weekend. one is usually <laughs> enough for me, let alone fucking three. Yeah, I mean. So their, their EDM Maniac is a, is a blog, strictly, that, that manages as far as like, just a publication for different it, articles, it shows it, videos. Lifestyle, yeah. yeah, I mean, magazine, like, digital e magazine kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it started at like it has its own website, edmmaniac.com. Right, right. But I mean, like, uh, Devin, like, he's just really talented. He's like very, like, he understands like the community. He understands like what makes the like electronic music, mm-hmm. like, as a whole, like, tick. He's, you know, it's, he's just like, 
he's just very involved. He's got it down. Yeah. yeah, and so like you know his presence on so that he like imbues into the social media is like you know we have a like you know it's it's something that's attract like a loyal following like one that's thing, good that's hard to find out yeah like one thing that we do is like kind of cool is like yes we have like over like one hundred and ten thousand followers on Instagram but like we're still like private. Like you, not anybody can just follow us. What's the logic behind that? Because I it, feel like isn't the wouldn't you want to just be able to get it out and get the whole, I mean, as many it, it, as much content as you can coming in and out kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that's definitely that. that's definitely true. And like when there was like four thousand, that wasn't the case, you know. But like now got that it, it's got getting it, bigger, it. it's you know we they keep it on private because you know it's not like some rigorous process. Like he just like I mean, looks yeah. at, he looks at the profile, you know. He sees like you know because like there's a vetting process. Yeah, because like huh. I mean I have like four hundred followers and i see all these weird like random people follow me like who are like it's either some like algorithm thing or like they're clearly trying to solicit like a follow back and then like they will unfollow in two seconds you know like so he's just trying to get people who like are just generally like interested in what we're putting out you know that's like a wide that's not bad that's like a wide yeah like a wide variety of stuff you know like we do giveaways through our socials yeah yeah yeah, do put out like not just like news but we put out like editorials and stuff you know just like our own ideas like he makes a bunch of memes and stuff like he's good at that. Sure. You know, so it's it's really like now recently become like a much more widespread thing than just like a blog. You know, like all of the blog is still like, you know, the core of it. Like we're actually starting a subscription service called EDM Maniac Plus. If anyone wants to subscribe, it's nice. $5 a month. <laughs> what does that get you? Um, there's like more there's like more like exclusive giveaways for like bigger events, you know, that like, you know, you know, just like you'd also it's just way decreases the amount of people you're going sure, against like sure, sure, now sure. we have 50 subscribers like a one in 50 shot at like a free ticket to uh, camp bad. out is not that bad, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> you know for, what i mean for and, five bucks a month yeah and then what's it called like, subscribe something that's something that's way cooler though is like yesterday um dash berlin played at this like really random like noodle festival in orange county noodle festival. yeah but the more important have those the more, the more important point is that we got like a meet and greet with dash and like we got people to actually like meet him and it's, it, was, mm-hmm. it was only like two winners so it wasn't like a big gaggle of people on him like you know signing tons of tons of autograph like they actually got like you know real like you know they actually got to talk to this yeah, guy yeah, yeah, they yeah. got like free tickets to the event they could so come how, do you, how does edm maniac even go about being able to get that sort of like one-on-one time with an artist that big you that's, just reach out to just, the festival it's just directly? Devin like I, like he just has been like I said he's like so involved like he, he's an influencer like in the traditional sure. sense of the word but like he's one who's actually like worth following because he's like funny and like does like really dope videos of really dope like he's just at Tomorrowland earlier sure. this year he goes to, to Tomorrowland every year he's about, about to go to ADE this weekend he's going to New York for that sounds exhausting, bro. Oh, yeah. That sounds exhausting. No, <laughs> thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here. I'll go to one every once in a while. Co- take a nap. Well, yeah, that's, that's – yeah, I mean – Have that's... you done Burning Man? No. No? Never? I'm going – not ne- not yet, but I I want to go, like, if not next year, then, like, the year after. Yeah, I'm, let me know if you go next I'm, year. I'm going to go eventually. It's going to happen. You no. know, like, I'm not, like, counting the days. You know, it's, it's going to go. It's gonna... I don't think the journalism <laughs> There's gonna be a... angle is really going to get you tickets to Burning Man this time. But no. We'll... You'll, you'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll, be, <laughs> I'll, I'll buy a ticket to Burning Man. That's fine. I'm cool with uh, that. How do you uh, – so as a journalist, how do you view events when you're at them? Because, I mean, for me, for example, like, when we, we're hosting or when we book – a night or when we're in attendance at someone else's night you see things a little differently because you're viewing it from the angle of the yeah you're kind of doing the work you know what yeah, i mean no, so i course. mean as a journalist do you, when they say like hey here's your ticket to this festival i'm obviously they're expecting like a through z of writing from you so yeah. when you're there is it, are you looking for certain things to write do you kind of jot things down as you go does I mean, it change the way you view events altogether well i mean it it's it's not the same as going just to have fun. Correct. It's not yes, the same as absolutely. that. But it's just like so cool because it's like in this like middle ground of where I'm not actually tied down to some right. people. In some cases, some people are, but I'm lucky. Like when I go through like Devin, he doesn't care about that. He's mm-hmm. just like, give me your best interpretation of the event. Like, you know, but so yeah, what like when I go to these events, like, you know, it's just, it's, it's like that. It's a weird middle ground, like not weird. It's the wrong word. Like it's an sure. awesome middle ground sure. <laughs> between, you know, you know, contributing, not necessarily to the event, but contributing something, like being there for a reason yeah, and yeah. getting to do, like, you know, getting to go about it however I'd like, you know, like, it's more just like, if you're at something and something sticks out, like, you know, if I'm annoyed by the same thing five times where I'm just mm. like, okay, like, just take, this bust thing. out my phone, be like, no, they need to do <laughs> this better, you know, like, if there's, like, one artist that, like, really sticks out or, you know, like, it's, 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 it's a lot of, like, peripheral, you know, like, when I first started going, like, I was definitely, like, 
you know, like, I need to, like, remember this. And, like, oh, right, like right, right. what was the entrance like, you know? Like, was there a sound, like, you know, just, like... There's certain had, like, points a, that you can't... Yeah, like, had a mental checklist, like, oh, crap. And, like, if I'd be going back over the piece and I didn't remember, it'd be, like, ugh, like, you know. But now, I'm... like, that I've been doing it, it's, like, you know... Yeah. Like, just, just go with the flow, you know, like... Make an effort to like not stay at once. Like if you're going to like event, don't go stay at one stage. Like you know, make your make an. So you effort. have prereqs for yourselves. It sounds like you have to like organize the way you go about the night, the way you see certain things. You mm. got to make sure you catch a little bit of everything, so you have an actual like or, fair assessment of the party. Yeah, I mean that that's generally true, but it's like it's it sounds more way more complicated than it's literally like oh like I'm at a stage where I'm having fun with my friends and it's like I need to go to the bathroom and then mm-hmm. like instead mm-hmm. of going straight back just like take a long way sure. back sure, sure, sure. you know and I mean like I, I would do that at festivals anyways even if I wasn't writing like just wander off by myself because is it hard to turn it off or is it easy to turn it off oh it, yeah, yeah absolutely. you're just like fuck this I'm not writing <laughs> absolutely, today. no absolutely no it's because <laughs> it's like it's no it's it's literally just that little it's like you said that that little yeah. like turn of the knob of just like oh I don't have to do anything except yeah. have fun when journalism, it's only I only have to do a little bit more than have fun. You know, like when I work events with Cyril, so you got an internal knob. That yeah, you're able to when turn I work with events with Cyril, it's like okay, I have something to do that's more important sure. than having fun. You know, it's you I know, have Cyril on the podcast soon. Yeah, as well. yeah he's, so he's, he's going to be a good one. Yeah. He's going to be. He's, he's he's an interesting conversation. Oh yeah, <laughs> no he's doubt. My, my Lebanese yeah. brother. Yeah. Um. So I mean, you got Icon was your introduction. To everything you started working with understate or um, excuse me, underrated. And I mean, it, Icon technically came last because I only got the higher. Oh, that's there right. A month you were ago. saying it was just a month ago. Yeah. Never mind. So Icon came. So what was the first introduction to like journalism fused with music? Um, like I was doing the the EDM Chicago. I'd, I'd say EDM like Chicago. I'd see EDM Maniacs probably like where I was like, all right, I'm a journalist now because like I don't necessarily like this definition, but from like the general sense of the word, if somebody How pays, come? why don't you like the definition of it? Well, I just, let me just. I was just saying like. If, is like oh like technically like you're not a radio host because you don't get paid to do this you know I don't necessarily like that but you know right. like when I started getting paid for my work it's like nobody could like say anything it's like oh you're not a real journalist you just write for this right. and that it's like no I'm a real journalist because I get paid to be a journalist you know right. so I, that was EDM maniac and so like from okay. then on I've never like I've always been like yes I'm a journalist mm-hmm. not like oh I'm writing blogs for fun no like i'm a journalist well, yeah because it's not for fun yeah exactly yeah, i'm a journalist it. i was a journalist then and i'm like a journalist today like if you go on my instagram like i have one of the business accounts but it just says right, like, right, like right. the title is like journalist you know like you know my main job is marketing and events coordinator for surreal i'm his content manager but like at, at its core that's what i i'm a journalist like i'm a journalist yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i introduce right, myself pleasure you know harry the journalist mm-hmm. what's dancing astro what's your involvement with them uh dancing astronaut i've been with them astronaut. for like uh about three a little more than three months and like that's just i really like writing for them just because like you know like i came on with edm chicago and they had eighty thousand mm-hmm. facebook likes dancing astronaut has like nine hundred thousand facebook likes okay. you know so like they they're very respected you know like you know i have a lot more freedom in order to do like you know i just interviewed michael rinzen for no, for right. them I for their that. desert hearts party you know yeah. like and you know because like it's just a like publication that more artists would be like excited, right. excited to be right, involved right. with. So it gives me a lot more freedom to, you know, like I'm about to interview Cohen Sound. I've never heard of them. They're like this, you know. They're, I'll show you their music afterwards. Sure. They're really good. Sure. But yeah, like I've liked them their music since like 2012. Like even before that, when I first started like getting into electronic music, now yeah. I get to interview them. Like might not necessarily have been the case with the other places I've been writing. You know, so that's just that, it was just like. You know, it gives me a little more clout right. in terms of like sure. being saying like, oh yeah, I write for Dancing Astronaut too. Like more people know that name than the other places. Is that the direction you're trying to get everything to us towards more of the journalism for obviously like bigger publications, bigger festivals, I mean, bigger brands? And I would, I would love like I would love to have be able to like be in the position when like ten years from now where I could just like hit up Rolling Stone and be like, I'm gonna write about something yeah, yeah. for you guys. But like, I don't know. There's no like one thing in music that I'd like. If I could never just give up like everything else mm. and only do one thing, you know. Even, I mean, it doesn't sound doesn't seem like you need to. You know, exactly. You're in exactly. A, you're in a field yeah, where like you, can you know, like well. right now, like I'm doing the marketing stuff for Icon. The still doing the journalism, still a DJ, like a few times a year. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> um, right. But and then also like the events, the surrealists. And, I mean, like that's like kind of like you know all the people who I respect in music, from like people like you sitting across from me, the people having on this podcast to you know, all time right. greats, like none of them just do like one thing, you know, right. they right. might have their main thing or this and that. Like, like my favorite example is someone like Damon Albarn. Do you know who that is? Mm-mm. He's the guy behind the gorillas. Okay. Yeah. He's like, okay, the, right. he's like the guy who writes all the songs, sure. but like 
he's in like five different bands. He like produces all these albums. You know, like he does all this other stuff. Like another another example that's like super intense is like Questlove, who like, oh, yeah. he'll say okay. like I've like sixteen jobs. Like he does everything he does with the Roots. He does everything he does with Jimmy Fallon. He's a DJ. He has like a food book. Yeah. Like all this yeah, other stuff. And you know, series too. Yeah, exactly. And it's like. Well, like, the thing what I, what I've I mean just in my experience it's like the, all those being able to do more than one thing is definitely possible. I think if you kind of have the the bullet points of what you want to do let's say you're doing the journalism you're doing the marketing you're doing the DJing at least there's like points for you to hit to be able to coordinate your time yeah yeah so I mean to do just one thing I don't think is you you can do more yeah I mean I mean that's just <laughs> all you motherfuckers can do more <laughs> that's my that's time. just like the way that I personally look at it you know yeah. some people like I know people who have their full time job and it's like a decent job that's yeah. making them that's a decent amount and then they go home and that's it. And they don't have once once they're out of their job, they have no nothing else. Yeah, like I can't do that. that yeah, they, like the most they might have, they might have like a dog or something, and like <laughs> or no. But other than that, it's like yeah, they they make a nice paycheck. They get to go out and for drinks every like that doesn't do it for you. Uh, no, not really. Builds up your anxiety. <laughs> not, I mean, like I was telling you earlier, like I just spent this whole like three day weekend like super chill, but like. I'm ready. I mean, to, you need that every once I'm, in a while. Yeah, I mean, fair, I'm ready fair. to jump back into work right, tomorrow and right. like stuff. Like, there's like a couple, um, a couple interviews that I need to like, op- write the little like intro. Do you for. set up like f- for let's say for example you're doing the writing for Underrated just yeah. for one of them? Do you do you, are you do you like sit down with Cyril to figure out hey these are the artists that we have booked for the next you know X amount of events? Let's line them up with something to where we're writing it for Underrated as well for the blog. Yeah, I mean, um, we have clinic every week, so like we try to get all the headliners to do like a quick email interview. You know, mm. since he books them like way far out, yeah. most of them have time. You know, it's you know they it's, don't get weird about it. I feel like it might be a little easier than doing it in person though, because I've had some artists where I've asked to like do something like the podcast, and they're just not the talkative type kind of thing. They're a little bit more on the reserve side, so that's there, there are definitely people who would prefer to do the emails. Yeah, absolutely. The emails, do the interviews through emails. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like for a lot of these, like a lot of these clinic artists, you know, most of them don't live in LA and things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, they, like the email, like it just it just makes it like less hassle free. Easy. You know, and I mean, most of the time I'm not communicating with directly with the artists. It's right. with their publicists or their managers yeah, that's true. and stuff. And like most of the managers, if they know that they don't like doing interviews, they'll just be like, nah, we're going to pass. And, you know, most of them, it's that's like, so oh, funny. let me come back to you in X right. amount of days to see what they say. Them saying no for like digital content like that, where it's just an email, if they just have to answer a couple questions, seems kind of silly. I mean, you know, <laughs> like to, to me, it yeah. seems easy enough. You know yeah, what I mean? Just like, answer a couple but questions. like, you know, like whatever, like. It, yeah. it's well, they, there have been times where there have been like miscommunications and it's been funny like sure. like one time a bot Andrea played clinic and you know I figured he definitely lives in LA so I was like I was like yo if if he has time I'd be down to right. do the, the right. in person interview and she's just like no he, it needs to be through email and like I'm get like and that was like one of the miscommunications because I saw Andrea at like the Dirty Bird barbecue which was like two weeks later I was like you know, I'm the one who sent you the question. He's like, dude, I really liked your questions and blah, blah, blah. Like, but? <laughs> no, he's just like, I was just like, oh, really? Like, yeah, I mean, I told I told Danny, like, his manager or whatever, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. let's do it in person. And he's like, oh, I thought she said do it on the phone. Like, if it was in person, I would have been down, but I just don't like doing the phone. People still do phone interviews like that? That seems... I don't... Phone interviews are my least favorite. Like, yeah. Because it's that like... seems so bizarre it's, it's, and impersonal. Like, it's fine. It's fine because at the end of the day, you can ask, like, follow questions like you can't with an email interview. But it's, A, like... I've had so many phone interviews where the quality of the recording is just terrible, yeah, and I'm garbage. just like, can't even really hear what they're saying. You know, like, Skype? Like, you know, it was no. literally like off my phone, yeah. like off my cell phone, and like, you know, these iPhones, they like, have come way farther in terms of like sure. output quality, sure, sure. but like, it's still like. I mean, this is being reported on <laughs> iPhone, not the yeah. audio, but the video. At least. Yeah, I mean, no videos. 4k yeah. like audios you know are still like slacking yeah, it's still, it's, 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 <laughs> it's still slacking a little bit that's why you gotta um, sink yeah but <laughs> sink, motherfuckers. actually no don't sink if we're talking to people in this industry don't sink yeah no, <laughs> don't s- sink. no sink button for y'all um yeah but is what? there like high season low season for this kind of industry for, for like i mean the work that you you do it sounds like it's pretty uh, you're kind of going with the brand so as the brand progresses as the brand brings different artists on as the brand has is busier mm-hmm. i feel like there's just content for you to be working pretty much all all year round. I mean, we're lucky we have Clinic, so Clinic gives us yeah. a weekly yeah. like lineup. Shout out to so, Clinic, man. Yeah. Killing it. 
Love you guys. Yeah. Love what you guys are doing with it, Thank too. you. The best move they could have done was going to Sayers Club. I'm telling you, yeah, man. Everybody, literally everybody said that, so good mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Good job, guys. Yeah, killed absolutely. <laughs> you killed it on that one. I wonder what – I mean, I, I think it's just because you change the change scenery. You take a brand and you can move it somewhere else, and people aren't expecting to see the same shit. So they go somewhere else, and it's like, oh, I mean, it was helpful. It was helpful that the location in and of itself was a block away. Like, we didn't, yeah, have, to, like we didn't have to move neighborhoods. Away. Then we would have run into some more trouble. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I mean, the scenery – Kept the scenery of Sayers, in my opinion, is just like way more, it's more in inviting line with what we're trying to yeah. do. You know, yeah. way classier. You know, like like station has its place. Like they have res- respect on Thursdays, the drum and bass show. And yeah. like, I'd oh, rather right. see a drum and bass show at Station than I would at Sayers. But right. with like house music, we're it's like spe- especially not not especially the kind of like house music that's not like like party rock sure. and like you know like more like slower and stuff like more like mature. That's like definitely right. a better space right, right, than right. Sayers was. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've not been Station. I mean, they're both. I mean, Station was was it always Station? What was the name before it? Wasn't it was Couture. It, uh, Couture, I, that's right. I, I think that. like I don't think I ever went to a show. I didn't go to a clinic when they, like they were at Couture. Like, I did. Right I remember when, that. Like right when I started, they were like making the change, and like when I was younger, like before I started working them, I definitely didn't go over there. I went to clubs very rarely when <laughs> when I first started. So this kind of gave you position to like really have to to be in attendance more often than you would like. Uh, I mean. Then I like there there are definitely like you know not every clinic has my favorite artist that's what I'll put it that way but I mean like it's it's definitely chill just because you know it's 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 part of the routine you know it's not like right. you know and again like yes I'm working but like it's not like I'm running around or sure, anything sure, and, like, sure, sure. insanely stressful yeah. yeah you know like I'm happy to do it you know like I definitely enjoy like I definitely enjoy it you know like just getting more it's one of the things that's helped me like get further and meet more people in the right, scene because like you know we'll run like because that's one thing that changes when I'm like working versus when I'm like there to have fun. Like right. when I'm working, like I'm like definitely way more down to just like, you know, like Network. talk to people and yeah. like, you know, converse and stuff. Like when I went and have fun, a lot of times just, I don't want to talk to anybody yeah, and I just to want to yourself. dance. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Just you're like a big dancer. Oh yeah. You're the guy in the middle. Fuck yeah. Not in the middle because there's no yeah, room. I know we're putting <laughs> you in the middle next time. <laughs> oh, I'm, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going on Saturday. So <laughs> what's going Dude, on Saturday? Your show. Bobby oh Bobby. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fuck. Jesus Christ, bro. At all t- we got Come something on, going man. on Saturday Bobby night. Analog, bro. Bobby Analog, yeah, that one's Stephon gonna be tight. Stefan and Fan. For that one. Yeah, Stefan and Fan. The boys fam. are both playing, bro. Yeah, yeah. We try. I mean, we we alternate them usually with with all our events, but this one we thought it would be fitting to have both of them with Bobby Analog too. So that's gonna be. Oh, I don't even know when we have fucking parties anymore, bro. This shit's like, <laughs> for you to tell me like, I, I totally feel you when you're like, you go out with a purpose, you go out because there's something that you need to do. The networking aspect, mm-hmm. actually working while you're out is like, it's it's good, but it's a lot, man. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, like. You know, it's because it's like, what's it called? Like, if I'm just at a party and meeting someone random, having fun, it's like, oh, yeah, like, I do all this all this work and stuff like that. Like, if that question wasn't, like, specifically prompted, like, it's not even really necessarily what I want to be talking about. Yeah. You know, like, I'd rather yeah. be talking about like, the music itself or just, like, getting to know the person and such. And But, like, if I'm already at, like, a party that I helped, like, put on and I'm working, I'm just like, yeah, it's really a lot, like, just feels more natural for, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it to come up, you know what I mean? Most people like are just like, yeah, that's cool. You know, it's not a big deal, obviously. But <laughs> how long have you been writing now? As far as like in the for for the music industry, let's say from ED, EDM Maniac. That's like start. almost four years. Four years. Have you seen a difference from? Because I'm sh- like obviously as you've when you first started, the music was different. Your taste in music was different. Mm-hmm. You obviously started writing. You were attending more shows, and now four years later, has there been like a big difference in the writing? Has, have you seen something as far as like the words you're choosing? the the it's, tone of it how happy you are with what you're saying has it gotten it's, better it, progressively worse it's just like anything like anything that you practice like yeah, every piece every time. piece is practice you yeah. know and like the best i mean the best way to practice is like cuz like you give it to someone and they edit it and like then you look at what they change mm-hmm. and you're like okay you know you don't always agree with your editors but most of the time you do oh so you do have editors yeah at, right. at dancing Got astro it. i have editors Got and it. like you know getting feedback from them has been really helpful you know like and stuff like that. Like Devin is my editor, you know, mm-hmm. he'll definitely, he definitely reads everything I write and, you know, we'll make changes and such like throughout, you know, cause I mean, the only way you get better at anything really is if you have like you honest, fe- if, yeah, yeah, if you have honest feedback and that's just like built into this process, you know, like yeah. that's why I don't have to like write like random stuff, like in my free time, just to, like, like show other people to improve. Like I'm like, mm. they're constantly like, but my work is constantly being critiqued. You know, and stuff like that by people that's good. Who, by people who have more experience. Yeah, you want so that? Like, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's right. exactly what I want. So it's it's helped you develop your writing. Oh, personally, ab- yeah, absolutely. Nice, you know, and that's only sure. going to help the brands you work with. Yeah, it's only going to help the articles. I mean, like you know, because like at this point, like I said, like I could tell people like I'm a journalist, and you know, I could point to like that little almost like 300 different like yes, most of them are for like 
you know, EDM blogs. 300 articles in yeah. three years? Damn, bro. Well, no, and that's, that's like, probably the three years, like, like, 190-something. That's a lot. That's a <laughs> I lot mean, of writing. I mean, it is, it is. How many fucking shows do you go to? They're going to do 190 in... Jesus. I mean, most of them, most of the articles aren't. Oh, they're aren't just like via email. For shows. Yeah. yeah, it's just Good like, point. you know, it's just little news pieces, <laughs> news pieces and such, right. you know. I mean, like, well, I, I guess one thing that's changed is now I can knock one of those out in like 30 minutes. And it's like, sh- like, say we're like, say for Dancing Astronaut, they're like, all right, like one thing, one of them I just did was Fortet. Just put another amazing nice. fucking EP. Yeah, of course. That's so like, yeah, but I, you know, I just wrote a piece about that and it was like, he had a quote like paired with the release and mm-hmm. just like wrote mm-hmm. like, not even a hundred words, and then took a quote that was like twenty words, so it was like a hundred words, and I was like, "There, yeah. done." Huh. You know, because like a piece you're like seeing, that, you're getting it down. You kind yeah, of understand piece, the nuances. A piece like of that, if someone opens it, they're not like, mm, "Let me see what this guy has to say." No, show me the track. You know, and it's like sitting right there. You think you don't think the people? Oh man, no, I read. I get there first. They read it. They read it, but if it's like five hundred words, they're gonna be like, "Okay, like." Yeah, you know, they kind of like, get the bullet points. Yeah, like it's it's a, it's just a single. Like an album review is something different. You know, like an album review is like, okay, this person reviewed it and is giving sure. a rating. Why did they give it this rating? But if it's like, hey, here's a track, it's like, all right, here's a little bit of background. Right. You know, right, like, right. like I said, he had his own quote. So this is something he wants the people to have like, be associated with this, like, this EP. So, you know, there you go, done. And then, you know, you listen to the track and you're amazed by yeah. it because it's Forte. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> it's just, it's Forte. What's your, um, what's the upcoming game plan with Minimal Effort? Because you guys obviously, for those of you who don't know, Minimal Effort Halloween is coming up. That's going to be tight. That's going to be October 26th. Yeah, what's the, what's the game plan for like your involvement with like writing because obviously that's that's going to be huge because as much as you're going to be as much as they're going to be promoting putting out the event promoting the artists talking about you know last year sharing photos your touch of writing for the event is huge well i mean like i said like getting involved with underrated was my first like introduction to marketing that was like almost two years ago Mm -hmm. so now like i do way more to help with the marketing and stuff like a lot a lot of like socials and stuff and like you know but like so yeah, I mean, I'm putting out a post like every day, at least one, you know, crazy. and and then um, consistent content. You need it, man. Yeah, I mean, we're like we have all like the photo albums from our past ones, mm-hmm. and, like all a bunch of old videos and stuff. So yeah, I mean, we're good on that front. But I mean, in terms of what I do with the writing, um, it just depends on like what like Cyril and the other team members of the team are feeling. You know, I I try to get a couple like interviews. Like Bonobos, our headliner, I mean, yeah. that'd be super yeah, awesome if huge. I could interview him. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just gotta try to get a couple interviews, some other, like, you know, we, we work on ideas together of like, you know, we have to think about what is going to make our event different yeah. from other yep. events. Cause yep. you know, there are other events happening in October, unfortunately. Um, I mean, you're in LA, bro. You guys signed up for this. Oh yeah. We, but you guys are one of the big dogs though. So yeah, it's, it's all good. That's, you know, that's one of the better events that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. You know, it's, it's, I mean, really, we really like the lineup. We're adding phase two soon. Keep your eyes, eyes peeled for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's like, you know, like. I'm lucky that Surreal, like, values the, not just Surreal, the people who right. go to our shows, they value that kind of stuff, you know, like, um, I mean, you're I, in a digital age, man, it's crazy important. Yeah, I mean, like, sure. what, what's it called, like, we had Dove Fire at the Viaduct, like, yep, yep. on, at the, end, <laughs> at the end of June, and, like, I wrote something about, like, the venue, because it's, like, the, like, the Viaduct is super mm-hmm. awesome, it mm-hmm. has, like, the bridge and the train going by, and, you know, like, a lot of people were, like, responding to it in, like, Facebook and stuff, they're like, wow, like, this venue is, like, actually, like, not just like another basic like rave parking lot you right, know like right. it actually like offers like something unique like you turn around you see like the skyline of la you know like it's 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 a very it's it's, it's like a unique it's yeah a unique like lo- you know like space for like sure. if 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 that like at the same location happened to me in the middle of nowhere you like you could throw like a real rave you mm-hmm, know like mm-hmm. all night and like it would really feel like authentic and stuff like that and so i mean yeah i mean I, location's key man oh Location's oh, yeah. huge for booking shows here in LA. Yeah, that is. It's hard to come by a good one that's not going to get burned relatively quick. Yeah, I mean. So stop fucking booking everywhere. <laughs> Save some shit for everybody else. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. I mean, like all these warehouse parties, and like none, like this is not a knock against any of them, but it's just like it eventually, if it, all the brands start using the same ones. You know? Well, like, that's the thing that I've noticed. They start using the same ones, but a lot of people now, the parties that are happening, people are like you said, they're trying to do something new that. Not necessarily that hasn't been done before, but that they haven't included in their events. So you have people incorporating vendors, incorporating painters, incorporating yeah. food, incorporating day into night. It's literally whatever whatever marketing ploy you can come up with to try to help bring something to your party other than just sound and dance. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, I've, huge, I've, I value those things at events in in, in small. I, no, I don't really, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ah, like it was a problem. I don't know. I was at um. 
I was uh, interning at Dirty Bird like earlier this year, and I just remember like they were they're all like they act, like. To just preface this, the activities that they have at Dirty Bird Camp are like awesome, and they yeah. like really contri- It's more than just what you can physically do; it like really contributes to like what Andy and Barclay like built in terms of it like really being a summer camp. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we were like one of the things I was doing like towards the end was like helping come up with strategies about marketing that. And I would be asking them these questions, and they would ask like, "Oh, like have you never been to like a Dirty Bird Camp?" But I was like, "I have, but like if I'm being honest, I just go to the stage and then right. go, go you back just to, skip everything and go else that's offered." Camp. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm either at the stage or at camp, and like, or I mean, they had water. At, I didn't go to this last one, but like this last one had water. I'd be in the water because having water at a festival is like yeah beyond game sounds kind of dangerous, right? but no, it's it's yeah. it's beautiful yeah i mean the thing that i liked about what they did with with again adding something different is that it's an actual camp it's like an adult summer camp so no, they, yeah, had, like, they had bow and arrow or archery mm-hmm. they had potato sack race they had extreme frisbee there was a lake with people in the canoe yeah i mean it's not just that they have it though it's that like everybody in, everybody involved in putting it on is like super pat like in like super into it you know like yeah they like, like you know like it, that was like when the first one like they wanted to make it clear like the everybody is equal like all the artists and stuff are going to be hanging mm-hmm, out with you mm-hmm. and like they just did like that was one of the reasons that it took off is because all the artists like dove into that shit like yeah. i was i was partying with all the different like dirty bird djs you know like justin J, Artelon, J flip they were all just out hanging out and then like that spirit of the festival has never changed yeah. like now it's just even more competitive and you know like the the artists will be like team leaders because like they'll be the different color yeah. teams yeah, 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 yeah. you know like, they did that with the extreme frisbee when we were yeah there. no it's it's a like they like they like brought something really like unique to the like really unique to like the festival market like yeah. one of the reasons do you why see I that in guys, other festivals that goes on uh yeah i mean there's one that i always tell people about is life is beautiful I've in vegas oh my dude okay that right, festival did I just is trigger something no Sick. that's a that just it's it. such it's just such a like a, like it's what it's, is it called life is, beautiful. life is beautiful it's in vegas and like just the idea of you bringing it up in terms of bringing something unique mm-hmm. that's what i tell everybody who's never been is like this festival is not just like another one of the festivals what's you know, the difference it's like you know you guys were just at in vegas for a 900 show mm-hmm. and like that was in the fremont district right. all life is beautiful is is they shut down like x amount of blocks and throw up big stages and they're like, on fremont yeah and all the restaurants oh, all the restaurants that are open including that bar that Under you guys the... played at yeah that bar that yeah. you guys played yeah, at was yeah, yeah. in the festival, and like little bands played on that stage, like oh, local tight. Vegas wow, bands. Wow, that sounds like it's a pretty big. And they would have like festival. fest. They would have like all the again all the restaurants stay open. There's a rec- record store that stays open. Yeah, it's a block party, giant block party in Vegas. Yeah, and they tight. have all these like dope like special deals, and then they also it's on Fremont Street, so like there are ins and outs. Yeah. And so you could literally like leave the festival, go to like a casino that's like right there, win like however much money, and come or right lose. back into the festival, <laughs> <laughs> and like. For whatever reason. Yeah, you it know, sounds super I, ideal to be able to just walk into a casino and win some fucking money and exa- come back. That's exactly what you can it's do. Fucking sorry. And then the other <laughs> the other thing about it is that like the lot like it's it's probably like the festival that has like the least amount of like dance music of like any fest big festival huh. that size in you know so what's in, the, in music the southwest. It? And it's like it's like, you know, multi genre like mm. coach I mean like it's still it does have dance music, but it has like this one stage and like it's not like a strict DJ stage. Sure, like they don't sure. have anything like a Yuma tent right. or anything like that. Like when I went, it was 2017, and that was uh, like the headliners were Chance the Rapper, uh, Muse, and Gorillas. And like, damn, yeah, it was great. Damn, that's a big lineup. <laughs> you know, and then like, I've never heard of this before. Oh no, dude, it's it's like it's that's a good tight. one. Yeah. yeah, it's like Coachella esque. Then it's not so, so much the, like, the dancing. It's house, Coachella esque, but like it's like in the city and like you know, party. and yeah, like the cool thing about like Vegas festivals because like. I wouldn't necessarily put EDC in this contender just because it's so big and mm-hmm. so many people from LA come. But like, like you said, you're yeah. from LA and you're involved in the scene. You haven't heard of this one, so it's like, like the people in Vegas when there's an event like that, like they're just so stoked to have <laughs> something like that in Vegas that isn't just like another club night at a huge right. resort. Right, right, it's right, like right. actually like a dope like offering that was again like I haven't seen you know anything that like. You know, I haven't seen anything like it. You know, genre centric. Yeah, it's not even genre. Just like the combination of things about yeah. like it being the block party. You know, like you really, get, you really get a like a authentic taste of Las Vegas, which you don't at EDC because you're just in a no, giant. No man, that's a whole nother. You're just world. in EDC a giant its speedway. Own, yeah, oh dude. no, like I mean, have you been to the Vegas EDC? Yeah, I just wow, went. Man. I went once in 2012, and then went back this year to watch Screaming Rusko play dubstep. <laughs> Sick. Oh and, yeah, I think I remember you were all hyped about yeah, it. Yeah, no. The, the thing was... with EDC that blows me away is we went to, or I went to the 2010 EDC, the last one that they had here in LA, mm-hmm. and it went from fucking Coliseum, which is you know a certain size, to what they're doing now in Vegas has been like insane. 
dude. The speedway, the the. I mean, it's you're going there for the grandiosity of it all. No, you're yeah, going there because it's so fucking no, yeah, out that, there. Because like, you know, the most the most like, I had a great time while I was there, but still, even the sa- one thing that was the same like seven years later was the most like you know like, the, I guess the most special like moment of it mm-hmm. all had nothing to do with any like the music or anything or like even like the event in and of itself is you just walk because the way you enter is like you walk like up to like the entrance and it's this tiny little like you know narrow hallway yeah, yeah. And so like when you you're talking like, about the speedway yeah, and yeah so when you open up and you're like come down in like the middle of the stands and you, you see, see the whole yeah. thing and it's like dude yeah. like yeah yeah like that that's the most breathtaking moment of you know of edc and like it's better than the fireworks show for sure <laughs> you know? i don't even think i stayed for the fireworks show when yeah i, I mean days. i don't know if they i don't yeah i mean it, they still do it for sure i mean no they definitely still yeah, do it but i mean it. just like now now was like the first year where they like they like it was like from like twelve thirty to twelve thirty seven. like there was no music playing on any of the stages and it was just like the fireworks show but like seven minutes Jesus seven Christ. minutes but like it, they i spent mean, a million dollars on the fireworks show by the way oh yeah you know. they spent 20 million dollars building the main stage jesus christ yeah. just the main well yeah i guess i can see it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty damn fuck it's pretty damn epic damn looking how at. does that i don't even understand the return that you need on that entire festival pascal if you want to holler at me <laughs> we'll talk fucking whatever, i mean they have but. so like the sources of revenue that, that EDC has insane. is innumerable. Like now that they have Camp EDC, they have all the partnerships with the hotels. They have all the Camp e- EDC. What's Camp EDC? It's it's camping at e- like it's like they not, do camping at EDC in the Vegas sec- the at second, the Speedway. Where you second, camp in the fucking parking lot? Yeah, they, they lay down. Get out of here. They lay down like a green tarp. You can like you can buy tons <sighs> of those like what is it? Those fire festival like domes, but it's not terrible. Fire festival. Yeah, domes. dude. Like, yeah, no, yeah, but, but like they, they have AC in them and all that stuff. Like, it's not just like, Oh, there's 10 of these. No, there's like, like 200 of those. I'm what? Pretty, yeah. Like the speedway on the fucking parking it's, lot. It's glamping. That's the best way to glamor camping, right. you know? And I mean, like they have a pool in there. They have like, you know, they got, they got all the money okay, in the world. So Once they decided they mind. wanted to do camping, it was just like, here's like anything right, yeah, that you here, could ever want money. from yeah. your campsite. You know yeah. I mean? The biggest draw of it for me is that like, it just makes it like it just makes it into that kind of festival where like I mean EDC in and of itself goes till five thirty in the morning. Right. But if you're camping, you just walk straight there and the stage is still going off, you know, and it, it just turns it into that kind of festival. And I mean, I've only heard positive things from people who say that because like if anybody's been to EDC they know that getting out of that parking lot if you stay oh, the whole time disaster. Disaster. Like Absolute that's another disaster. thing that didn't change in like seven years. They didn't put like fucking parking attendants there to help. Yeah. Like at all. It was just like well, I mean, like all these cars. even like Ubering out of there is a fucking nightmare. No, d- don't, no, never do that. <laughs> well, no, we, 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 we used to have, or we would get places like Airbnbs that were relatively close, mm-hmm. walk out of the fucking, through the parking lot, walk out of, okay, and, yeah. uh, away from everything. I would rather do that. Yeah, we would always just <laughs> walk out of there, walk out of the parking lot, at least one or two blocks, call the Uber, and then we were relatively close. Yeah, so it I, wasn't too far. I, w- I would rather stay at a hotel that's like, cl- like I could go to the parties on the strip like when I wanted to. Which I'll would, go to sleep. Mostly. Yeah, like, that's I, where I'm going. I meant like in the, going. in the days leading up. I mean, I, pro- I probably the still days, wouldn't. I'll go the day of it's EDC. Like a, I'm pretty sure a, I still haven't been to any of those big clubs like Excess. I've never been to any of those no, me parties. Neither. Me neither. I've heard a beer is $14 and it's like, it's like a Bud Light. And I'm like, no. Well, welcome to Vegas, my no. brother. Are you not, no, do you not do but, Vegas regularly? Do you not know no, these prices? Yes. not really. Yes. But, yeah, like, yeah. like life is beautiful. That's not the case. It's, like, seven, $7 for, like, a Dos Equis, like, a normal Yeah, LA but you're going to see, yeah. And I've yeah. seen gorillas, which is way sicker than anything that, fit, anything that fits in those clubs. So where, um, what, what's upcoming for you? What's, what's the plan for as far as, like, with the writing? What, what direction are you trying to go in the next couple months? What's going on with Minimal? Underrated, um, your well, own personal icon? I mean... Minimal is the biggest thing coming up, okay. October 26th. October Tickets 26th. are on sale. I got my buddy's wedding October 26th. So what a I'm gonna, I know. <laughs> I, was, I was pretty hyped. Last year we went as uh, uh, Neo and Trinity. Oh, and, and I mean, I saw is. Narc as the clown. Narc as a clown. He's a clown every year. <laughs> Same costume. I t- I t- Respect. No, I told him to be, he has to be the Joker oh this year. T- t- oh, I know. It's so right? fitting, right? If you're already <laughs> going to be a clown every year, nice. Gotta, gotta We're going to tell Narc, you're going to be the bro. Joker. Narc, if he's even listening this far. Um, but I mean, next steps, um, like I said, I mean, just really plugging away, just like no, nothing like other than minimal, nothing like drastic. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, it's been a good year in terms That's of, good. in terms of my like career development, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. everything is, everything's like moving along at a steady pace and, you know, I'm just, I'm just stoked to be, I'm grateful to be in this position. Just going to keep, keep oh, yeah. things going for now. Like let things go with the flow, you know, especially like with the, having the full, like this is my first like full-time, full-time job ever. So like. I still need to like make sure that like you know 
just fully like More get, things are get into the groove into it you know get into the groove yeah do what you got to do man where yeah. can people find you on social media where can people find collectives you work with who you want to shout out uh if you want to follow me the only one the only one you should really follow is my instagram that's the only one where i do any kind of like artist stuff makes sense <laughs> um, so at larry heaven dj and um larry heaven oh yeah bro okay All right. i mean People, yeah, no, it sticks out with people. Like I've thought about changing it, and like Rosenberg and other people are just like that's just like the best name. Yeah, I'm fuck like, with it. Yeah, get it. I'm like cool. Like, <laughs> Larry you know, is. DJing is not going to be a big enough thing to where I have to worry about something like that. That's um, fair. Uh, but underrated, we have our like the best thing. If you go to any of our underrated like accounts, we have a, it's like if you go to our underrated presents or minimal effort or clinic Wednesdays mm-hmm. on the Instagram, there's a link tree which has all the links. Like we have our website underratedpresents.com. Um, EDM Maniac is all, you know, EDM Maniac.com. Uh, there's all the socials just t- type EDM Maniac. Uh, Dancing Astronaut, same thing, you know. And then Icon. I icon mean, Collective. If, if you're interested in going to Icon, go to the website, IconCollective.com. Yeah, I want to check that out. There is there is actually a blog, too, that I just wrote, like, my first thing for. So Congratulations. check that out. Oh, yeah, check it out. Um, but uh, that's, like, ma- mainly just, like, hardcore like production techniques like music theory stuff like yeah. stuff that students would want to read first but you know if you want to learn more about music it's all free check it out no kidding <laughs> i mean yeah it's just a blog you know it's no, just like sense. it just says like like x guy to this compressor and stuff like that you know so i mean oh, it's like a mass digital master class so pretty, to speak. Uh, yeah uh, i mean master class is even a bit it's good give yourself the credit it's good information to have if you're yeah. into producing i'm not in producing at all but other if you people, are <laughs> other people while listening are. and get the shit other people are <laughs> oh, yeah. well i appreciate your time man thanks yeah, for man, coming course, out i appreciate bro. you yep <laughs> thanks for tuning in y'all <laughs> Take, why don't you, you try that again so we can no we're good we're-